What's up guys, Mike here, back with you with another new video about real estate. You know, I didn't think I was gonna cover real estate in my next video, but I'm still getting so many questions, so much interest in this topic that I wanted to cover it again. And that interest and the questions I'm getting is coming from existing clients, potential new clients, and even YouTube subscribers. I get so many inquiries around real estate that I thought I better cover this topic because I think this video could help so many people if they just understand the rules. Because real estate folks, they make it so confusing for us, to be honest. Even as a CPA, who I've been doing this now for nearly 15 years, I still learn new things about real estate every single year. And it took me years and years of full-time experience working in public accounting to learn what I'm sharing with you today. I'll tell you that it's real estate is not a one-size-fits-all, but it's actually a combination of multiple layers of rules. So when we people will go online and they'll read an article on Google and they'll say, Mike, I read this or that on Google. This is my understanding. Well, that article they happen to be reading, unfortunately, it only covers one of the multiple layers of rules. And so what they read may or may not even apply to them at all. And so in today's video, I just wanna cover a few questions that I get a lot so that hopefully we can address this and I can help you make more sense of how this stuff actually works. I'm just gonna be talking to you on camera today, guys. I don't have examples. It's been a crazy busy week for me in my practice. I've been had uh, coming back from vacation. Well, you know, the, as owning your own company, I can tell you your reward when you come back to your, to your business is that you get to work about twice as hard to try to catch up. <laughs> so that's that. So I don't have a lot of time to put into this video or video editing. So I just wanted to talk to you briefly about it. So one of the first things I wanna cover with you all is there is sometimes I get confusion related to if, if rentals, rental real estate, affects itemized deductions? And the answer is no. Rental real estate, if you have a property that you are renting out, is completely separate from the rules surrounding itemized deductions. Itemized deductions, they come into play when we're talking about our personal residence. That's the main example. If we have a mortgage, if we pay property taxes, that's when those particular tax attributes are gonna potentially affect itemized deductions. The other example with real estate that might impact Schedule A itemized deductions is if you own a second home, a second property, let's say it's a cabin, let's say you know it's like a vacation home type of arrangement. Well, if we're not renting that out, if we're not doing Airbnb or whatever it is with that property, then the mortgage interest and taxes may also be deductible and part of our itemized deduction equation. So just remember that when it comes to rental real estate and itemized deductions, those are two completely separate tax topics. Okay, let's talk about the next topic. Okay, the next topic and the main topic I really wanna cover with you guys today is real estate loss deductions. And when we think of a deduction, right, that's something that's going to reduce our income. And when it comes to rental real estate in particular, because that's the focus of this video, the deductions we're talking about, they're gonna reduce our rental income. So that thing, that could be like supplies, mortgage interest, property taxes, insurance on the home, those are common expenses, management fees, things like that. And of course, when with rental real estate, oh, and depreciation, I don't wanna forget that one. With rental real estate, if we have a situation where the amount of our deductions exceed our rental income, then ultimately we're gonna have a loss on that rental. Now here is the big factor that I want you to consider is that the way that loss is treated can really be different from person to person depending upon how active they are in their rental real estate. Yeah, act, being active, it really does make a difference. And you might have heard of the term active loss or passive loss, so that's what we're gonna go into right now. So somebody who is a real estate professional, I'm not sure if you've heard that term before, you might have heard of that term, but essentially that is somebody who puts in their own time into managing the property, cleaning the property, you know, doing all these different things to take care of the property for their tenant, that equates to 700 hours uh, per year. Essentially, most people are, I can tell you, are not real estate professionals. By far, they're not. But there are a few who are, and those who are can have better tax advantages because they're so actively involved in managing their properties. With an active loss, it can actually, will be fully deductible 
in the year of the loss against all of their other income sources. That, so that loss comes through on the first page of the 1040. So if they have wages, if they have interest income, dividend income, capital gains, whatever it may be, ultimately that loss from their rental activity is going to reduce their taxable income overall and lower their taxes because of it. And so it's a massive tax benefit that most investors, they don't have access to that because most investors who do own a property, usually one property or two properties, they're usually working full time at a, at, at a job doing something completely different than real estate full time. Okay, so what happens if we're not real estate professionals and we're not able to make that loss a an active loss? Well then, of course, it's probably gonna become a passive loss, right? that a passive loss it is that the remember the amount of the loss is the same dollar amount either way you don't lose it but instead of being able to deduct it against your other forms of income like the real estate professional we have to then carry that loss forward with us into the future so instead of getting so basically instead of getting to use that loss right then and now we have to take the advantage of that loss and those deductions over a period of, could be one year or several years. So it's gonna keep carrying forward into the future. And as your rental property makes more passive income or rental income, that loss is slowly gonna get used up. That loss carry forward, if you don't know what I'm talking about, comes through on form 8582. That's where it gets stored. And that's where the record of what that loss is from year to year and how much of that is on use keeps carrying forward is going to be found on that form when you're working through your taxes or you're just trying to better understand how this stuff works with a passive loss now generally speaking you know that's most people for rental real estate is generally passive now there is an exception to the rule in the most recent video i just made on my channel there is an exception to the rule where you don't necessarily have to be a real estate professional to take advantage of that loss but if your income is under 150,000 per year, talking about your adjusted gross income primarily here, then you can deduct up to $25,000 of a loss deduction against your other forms of income. So that is a very unique exception to the general rules. So something to know, like I said, guys, there's multiple layers in this thing. So unless you know all these little itty bitty rules and how this stuff all pieces together, it's very hard to fully grasp. But what it, but essentially, if you have at least you know 100 hours or 250 hours into your involvement in the property even 400 hours then you're more likely to be able to be able to do that to at least get some potential loss benefit during that year versus having to carry it forward as a as a fully passive loss so that's kind of nice but it's important that you know when you're doing thinking about real estate investing think about how involved you want to be because ultimately your involvement is is going to impact how you can take those deductions ultimately against whether it's your other forms of income or you know or if it's just going to be a scenario where it just carries forward and that's fine too that it but to, to know that in the back of your mind though it's going to be extremely helpful because if we're new to real estate investing and we're thinking that we're spending you know thousands and thousands of dollars renovating our property if we're thinking in the back of our mind that we can deduct all that and get and lower our overall taxes that year well we, you know we might be completely you know floored when we realize we can't because we're not you know a real estate professional or we don't have enough hours involved because we're very passive and letting other people manage our properties we're not really you know screening tenants we're not doing repairs we're not doing all these other things that could count towards our hours then uh, knowing that ahead of time might change how we manage our money and how we ultimately want to manage the investment as a whole because it is an investment and hopefully a cash flowing investment for you if you have a rental property. So th that is one of the key differences between active losses, which can be deducted against your other forms of income, to passive losses that cannot. So a good example of somebody who's active is the largest real estate client I ever worked on was worth over a hundred million dollars. He owned. He was like Mr. Monopoly board, guys, I'm not even joking. He owned an apartment complex. He owned several blocks of properties. I'm not joking. He owned the freaking block. Like he had that much wealth. It was pretty insane. But at the end of the day, he could deduct everything against his, he also had a wage because he had his own management company, but he could deduct everything against his other income sources. Whereas the average person who does have a rental usually just has one or two. That's more of the average and uh, their losses are passive. So 
there's a big difference between somebody who does real estate full time, I hope you can see, versus somebody who owns a couple properties but really does something completely else for a living, like most people do, um, when, when we're doing uh, real estate investing. In my accounting practice, what I love to do with my clients is talk through with them what their goals are in terms of their rental real estate and help them form the best strategy possible, not only to minimize their taxes, but ultimately to manage their cash flow in terms of how they go about the real estate investing process. If you liked today's video, drop a like, let me know you liked it or dislike it if you dislike it. Either way is fine with me, I love feedback. Your comments are greatly appreciated. Your comments and questions, I love reading every single one of them and I'll try to respond to as many people as possible. And make sure you're subscribed to future videos on accounting, business, money, taxes, and more. And it's always a pleasure, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you in the next video and have a great week. All right, bye guys, peace. Thank you.